and many people claim to witness human forms taking shape in the clouds in the sky. This one was captured on film and posted to Instagram with the simple caption, Los demonios están sueltos, which means the demons are loose. What's up YouTube, welcome back to my channel. How you guys doing? If you guys are brand new to the channel, man, you guys don't know what we do, let me tell you about it, man. We break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank my supporters, man, who's um watching the videos entirely hitting that post notification bell, man, and I'm um, hitting that like button on each and every single video that I drop. I really appreciate the support. So you could just find this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best, man. You guys know what we do, man. Let's seek the truth. Dark moments, here we go. Break it down for us. Mm. Okay. Cute engineer. After you offended him. Spree. I'm even darker, bro. This whole phrase, bro. supernatural stories where we explore mystical tales from around the world here we go today we delve into the fascinating world of turkish culture amidst the sandy dunes the legend of the jinn takes form jinn beings of smokeless fire possess incredible powers in turkish folklore mm. ancient rituals and talismans were created to protect against the jinn's influence these tales have been passed down through generations captivating young and old alike in Turkey, the belief in jinn remains woven into the fabric of daily life. As the night falls, families gather to share these timeless stories, fostering a strong sense of cultural identity. Turkish folklore speaks of jinn granting wishes to those who show respect and kindness. Thank you for embracing the mysteries of Turkish culture with us. More supernatural stories await. See, you know, what do you guys think, man? We've been here and... We've seen Jen across a couple of clips um, we, we, that we've been reviewing together. It's like everybody has a different story. But this one says it's like embedded in folklore, so that's in a way weird. Girls and guys go to Turkey for surgery. Well, so much dodgy stuff is happening. People are going in and there's like four of them lined up in a room all getting surgery done by the same surgeon to save cost and whatever mm. there's also organ harvesting it's terrifying because it's cheaper people are going there but there's so much dodgy stuff that happens it's really scary and it's because of this pressure like people are feeling they have to do this to fit that beauty standard whereas all those celebrities that you're striving to look like have managed to go to a private hospital. They're probably paying like hundreds of thousands. Talk about it. Like, could you imagine waking up in surgery and there's like four of you laying on a bed, like getting all the same operation done? Oh no. This was bad. I have to think about it, man. I heard like, we've seen like a couple of videos I'm in. Scrolling down YouTube, you know how people they be going, I guess, turkey, you know, for their hair and stuff like that. 
but it sounds like, man, a couple of those speaking cases, they took a dark turn, man. Be careful, bro, trying to keep up with this the status of this beauty status, man. By far, one of the scariest things that has ever happened to us. Horrible. This is how we almost got sex trafficked. And to you women out there, this is a warning to be careful in foreign countries. So we get off the ship and we go into a random cab. This man, I asked him, could you please open up the windows? He says, no, you're not allowed to open the windows. And he didn't take card or anything like that. So I go sit in the front seat because I'm like, if I sit in the front seat, can I open up the window? He said, yeah. So I go mm. in the front seat. And he's flirting with me. He's taking videos of me. He starts, give me your phone. Let me just do a little demonstration of what he starts doing. doing to them. So he takes his phone. He's sitting in the front seat. Starts going like this and then like this to the back. Then he starts calling right. his friend and speaking Turkish. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? So and then he writes in Google Translate because I'm like trying to talk to him like to like play the game back. And he's like, I just want to have sex with you tonight. Like, And then he says, I'm not dropping you off unless you're having sex with me. So then we're like, what the fuck? fuck is going on so mm -hmm. i was like i'm not gonna tell him that i'm not gonna have sex with him i'm just gonna play the cards right so i'm like yeah like if you drop me off to where i need to be later you know we'll meet it back up knowing obviously i'll call for help i just need to get to my next destination Smart. we start hyperventilating in the back seat and he offers caitlin a pill oh my god i forgot about that he offers caitlin a pill and we're like no no thank you no thank you he's and like take this it'll calm you down and that's when we like lost it, literally started crying, and we call all of our guy friends, send them our location, like just watch. We tried to find going. one of our friends who speaks Turkish, but no one did, unfortunately. And it was just the scariest nightmare. situation we've ever been in. We but we made it, it because we, we played the cards right, and we played his game, and we played him, and now we're alive. Yeah, and also do not wear bikinis, even if it's a beach town. Got to dress. Yeah, to the team. we made the mistake of wearing bikinis and, and we didn't have to do. Yeah, so that's on us, but... And this is a lesson for you. Be careful out there. Be careful when we're going out of the country, man. You never know what could happen. Williams was down decided there? to undergo a simple nose job in Turkey. She suffered severe complications and has been left in a permanent vegetative state. She's unable to speak, walk, or do anything for herself. The 47-year-old returned to the UK on a private ambulance flight and now lives in a care facility. I'm telling you, man, we keep seeing these clips, bro. People trying to keep up with these beauty standards, man, but they go into these other countries and stuff trying to pay half off, but... It's never worth it, man, because you never know where you could be, you could end up becoming the story. It's a shame. If you want to learn more about genes and how they work and how the curses work, the six-part movie called Dabe. I hope I pronounced it right. It depicts it really well, and it's actually based on a true story. The story is based on the village of Kibaldir. I hope I pronounced it right again. And it's the story about how a girl was possessed by a gene on her henna night. Which, if you don't know, is what they do before a wedding. And with the film, you learn how she was possessed because of her father's death, how the curses work, who cursed the family, and so on. Mm. That is very good details. Also, there's no jump scares. It's just very well done. I'm not gonna go in further details so as not to ruin the film for you. But if you are looking to learn more about teens and curses and the whole thing, this is a good movie to watch. See, so we check that out. Learn more. Yelbegin is a multi-headed man-eating monster in the mythology of Turkic peoples of Siberia, as well as Siberian Tatars. In ancient Altai legend, there was a seven-headed ogre, Yelbegin, that would take revenge on the sun and the moon by eating them. This ogre sometimes chewed the stars in his mouth and broke them into pieces and then spit them out. Therefore, stars used to run away from him into the sky. The god Algan shot arrows at Yelbegin to repel him and return everything to its natural order. Ooh. According to the Altai people, a lunar eclipse used to take place because of this ogre. Yelbogan is generally considered to be a creature separate from dragons and a polar opposite to them in its nature. It is a being of pure evil, a dragon-like beast and dreadful monster with no reason that usually lives in dark and hostile places or guards unreachable locations. It is often depicted with three, seven or nine heads and breathes fire. Oh, man.
Karakomkalis is the booty Sounds man scary. from Turkish mythology. Traditionally, he's around during the coldest months, where he stands on street corners on winter nights waiting for passers-by and asking them riddles. If the traveler gives an answer that includes the word black, then the Karakomkalis lets them go on their way. But if the passerby fails to use that word, or indeed fails to answer at all, the Karakomkalis strikes them dead with a single blow. He sometimes uses powers of disguise to pretend to be a loved one, and lure the householder out into the snow. Once outside, the person finds themselves caught in a trance unable to move. They stand mm -hmm. there frozen to the spot until the cold takes over and they wind up freezing to death. Also he sneaks into houses and linger behind the doorways of children's bedrooms. As the child goes through the doorway the Karakonkulus stretches out a hand and grabs the child by the neck before dragging them off to eat them. One way of getting rid of him is to set fire to some silk or thread. He will respond by setting his own fur on fire and will run from the house screaming to find water. The Karakonkulus. Two folklores we learned back to back, man. That one said, man, he uses your, gets your family members against you. To try to lower your side and freeze you today? Mm. We learning out here. We learning out here today, Seekers. Ricky, tell me what the worst. Uh was he was pushing, you know? Make a a simple list. tap on the shoulder just may have saved the life of this man. This video was filmed in Turkey from the security cameras outside this man's shop where he was outside rearranging his goods at night. He felt a tap on his shoulder just seconds before this gate comes careening across the street mm. right towards him. But who exactly was this mysterious man who warned him of the impending doom? And how exactly did this mysterious man know that this was going to happen? Good question. Some speculate that he may be a guardian angel, but others, after reviewing the video, seem to find an eerie resemblance between the shop owner and the man who comes to tap him on the shoulder. Hmm. And because of this, many people have questioned whether or not this may be a time traveler. Could it be that a future version of himself has come to warn him, saving him from his fate? What do you guys think? That close. Wow, that's an interesting theory, man. Time travel? Heard about that a couple times, man. But they kind of, they do, well, they both ran a black hole, so they were looking similar. Maybe he knew, like, obviously, because if he lived through that event, he saw it happen, so just tapped him on the shoulder. That could just be a completely random stranger, man. But the theories can be endless on that one. That's a brain turner for sure. I'm gonna need you guys thoughts down below on that one. Last weekend, there was a storm in Istanbul, Turkey. And many people claim to witness human forms taking shape in the clouds in the sky. This one Ooh. was captured on film and posted to Instagram with the simple caption, Los demonios están sueltos which means the demons are loose. Mm. Definitely saw some in those clouds. Have you heard of the Thanksgiving ghetto? Condemned to die in 1666, Augustus Hobbes escaped the gallows and has haunted New England since. Kidnapping children to eat for Thanksgiving. Mm. Another scary story, okay. and this one comes from Turkey. So back in 2009, my dad, my dad's cousin, and I went to our village in Turkey. The village was weird to me because only people who lived there were my dad's family. There was nobody else. No homes, no markets, nothing. We had to drive one hour to buy anything. Before I tell you what happened in that village, I have to tell you about the Yether. Mm. Yether is believed to be spirits of soldiers who had died in battle stay where they died and keep that land protected. Basically, if you ever come across a soldier spirit that it's called a yether. So back to the actual story. It was my first night in the village. As I said, the only people that lived there were my dad's family. So the population was max 20 people. Okay. So our relatives would come and visit us and then they would leave. 
I tried to sleep early as there was nothing else to do or no children to play with. I remember waking up in the middle of the night to some walking sound coming from the living room. By the way, I was sleeping in the bedroom. Mm. I got up and wanted to see who was walking in the middle of the night. When I went to the living room, I saw a soldier walking back and forth in the living room. I didn't know anything about yathers, which were like dead, martyred soldiers. Spirits. Soldiers. So she didn't know anything about this at this point. So I said, what are you doing here? And he stopped walking and looked directly at me. He looked surprised and said, you should be sleeping. Go back to your bed. In Turkey, we really respect and love our soldiers. It was possible that my grandpa let a soldier sleep in our house. So I thought he was an actual human sleeping the night at our house. Hmm. So I went back to bed. And in the morning, when I told my dad and my grandpa what happened, they said, you witnessed a yather and explained to me what a yather was at that time. I didn't feel scared or anything because he was actually very nice. The energy was very loving and comforting. Aww. So he was like maybe a nice gin, right? Anyway, send me more guys. These are so good. It was a nice gin? I think that's the first time we heard or something like that. Yubir, in Turkish mythology, is a vampire who subsists by feeding on the life essence of living creatures. He is a large-headed, long-tailed being. Usually wizards who have perished turn into Yubir. He can stay still for days or even months. Once he's hungry, he can fly to find nourishment. Mm. He does not fear anything or anyone, because he is fear itself. He can spread infectious diseases around it and kill everything in his path. He eats whatever or whoever he finds. He can also take any shape he wants whenever he wants depending on the prey. He's known to be disguised as a wolf or wild dog and feasted on sheep. They also gather at the top of a mountain and eat people they've kidnapped. Anyone with a Yubir infection starts to look like him, and they cannot get enough to eat. Yubir is an insatiable raging greedy creature that swallows everything in its path. Yubir also likes to suck women and animals' blood, however. He prefers to eat them whole. Is this a vampire? So I, that's what I got off that. Basti is an evil spirit in Turkish mythology similar to a nightmare. It rides on people's chests in their sleep and holds them down so they can't move or breathe. Mm. It also causes bad dreams. In addition, it rides horses at night, leaving them exhausted the next day and unable to work. It is generally regarded as feminine and appears as a beautiful woman dressed in white or yellow, but sometimes it appears as an ugly hag. It can shapeshift as well into any shape it pleases. Regardless of form, it can fly and usually enters a house through the keyhole. Once inside, it sits on the chest of those sleeping and inflicts horrible nightmares. Those it attacks wake up in a panicked fever, unable to move. It can torture men with dreams of desire, and over time, it will drain away their life. In other versions of the legend, it attacks those with a guilty conscience. Protections against the Basti include placing a knife under a pillow. So maybe that's another um as the bad dreams. Basties. Is that what sometimes like the sleep paralysis too? They said they be riding on your chest and sometimes you can't move and can't breathe. Learning man. Just connect and putting the pieces together. Oof. Seekers. If you guys made it with me to the end of the video, you're a true seeker seeking the truth. I greatly appreciate the support, man. Like I said, I've been seeing the support in the past couple of videos. I greatly appreciate it, man. Like I said, let's continue to grow. Let's continue to get into this algorithm. Just take off and explode. So thank you guys for joining me on my journey. Don't forget to follow me on all my social medias. Comment down below, man. Also, man, what can I do to improve the channel? Make it better. Always open um, for criticism and what's best for the channel so I can improve it. You guys can catch in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new, brand new to my channel, you guys don't know what we do here, man. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained. You can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank my supporters, man, who's tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, man, hitting that like button on each and every single video. You guys are helping us um, push us into the algorithm. Greatly appreciate the support. Fought this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best, man. Let's seek the truth.
okay. It's awesome movement. Snake it out, man. You could definitely saw some movement on those objects, but those edits or were those just like legit cases, I guess, of paranormal um, activity going around on those objects, man. Those statues. It's a very creepy and eerie. You guys know what to do. Casper was born in the 1800s, and his mother actually passed away while she was giving birth to him. Mm. So he was raised by his father, and apparently his father was a really good man. He treated Casper really well, was a very loving father. He always wanted to make his own son happy and would basically do anything for him. Well, there was this one Christmas where Casper begged his father to buy him a sled. So, of course, because his father loved him so much, he went out and bought him a sled, and Casper was... What happened? You know the story of Casper the Goose? It happened because of a sled? Mm, alright. Oh, this is a dog. Dream. I got everything I wanted. But I went in the wake of Percy. You went with me. Put your phone in your mouth for like a year. If you're alone right now, nah. don't watch this video. In the winter of 2018, a man who was living alone in the mountains wakes up to find a red ball sitting on his front yard. He assumed the only neighbor he had must have kids, and so he kicks the ball over the fence, goes inside, doesn't think anything of it. That night, he wakes up to the sound of kids laughing outside of his window. He goes outside to check on them because it's the middle of the night, and there's no kids anywhere, but that red ball is back on his property. So mm. he picks it up, brings it in his house, and goes back to bed. The next morning, he goes over to his neighbor's house to let them know that their kids were out in his yard in the middle of the night. But it turns out his neighbor is just some old man who lives alone, and there aren't any kids anywhere in the area. That night, he wakes up again to the sound of kids on his property, and when he looks outside, there's no kids, but that red ball is back on his property. Panicked, he runs downstairs to make sure the one he brought in is still inside, and it's gone. He checked every window and door, and everything was still locked. It didn't make any sense. He decides to look out the window one more time, and off in the distance is some weird, stiff figure watching him. Was that somebody playing like a, a, a prank on him or not? Oh, that red ball was legit haunted. He took it inside the house, but when he go to look for it again, it was gone. Mm. That one gets, gets the mild time. I'm going to ruin your, your childhood. Peter Pan was a crazy psychopath that trapped little kids in Neverland. He killed them before they grew up, which is why they can never leave as adults. Captain Hook was one of the Lost Boys that escaped Neverland, which explains why Peter Pan attacked Captain Hook and bent his arm to the crocodile. Which means, the whole time, Peter Pan was the bad guy. I'm sorry, guys. Childhood, freaking exposed. Oh, like, Alexis has been gone for... So freaking long trying to actually do. Okay, but like, okay, okay. <laughs> What's this? What the hell was that attacking him? They was all in the, in the um, woods camping. Like, like, watch Avatar The Last Airbender. Some out of nowhere just freaking attack him looking for Alexis. Because she was using the bathroom out there. Maybe it could have been an animal of some sort. I don't Did know. Did we dig a hole to hell in 1989? In 1989, geologists were digging the Kola Borehole, which is now known as the largest hole in the world, measuring at 7.5 miles. Damn. It's said that they stopped digging when temperatures rose too high, around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
but the story goes that the geologists heard the sounds of suffering souls within the hole, which gave it the name The Well to Hell. They recorded sounds of masses of people screaming in torment and agony from this hole. It's said that then scientists watched in horror as a massive cloud burst from out of the ground. The story goes that this cloud then formed into a monstrous bat, and I Have Conquered was written across the sky. I'm now going to play a recording of the sounds that were heard in this hole. Check out part two for the rest of the story, and here's this disturbing audio clip. Sounds like it's based off Stranger Things. Hmm. This story's called Help Me. A Macedonian family have been traveling through America. After being out late one night, their little girl curls up in the booth of a restaurant and falls asleep. She later wakes up in the back seat of the car. Still dazed and confused, she sees them pull into a doctor's clinic. While in the doctor's, the girl struggles to understand anything that's being said. The woman turns and says, where's the usual doctor? And calmly, the doctor turns and says, well, I'm feeling in today. Angry, the mother says, well, my daughter's sick and I think she's got food poisoning. When he talks to the girl in English, he doesn't get a response. The mother says she only speaks Macedonian. And the doctor turns and says, Dobro in Macedonian. The girl's eyes light up. He leans down and says, are you okay? Have they hurt you yet? The girl says, no, but that's not my mum. I'm so scared. He looks at the mum who's confused and says, I'll have to examine her. As she lays on the table, he says, I'm a policeman, sweetie. These people have drugged you. They've also taken my daughter and I need you to go with them so I can find her. She hops down from the bed and in total fear, she leaves with the woman. What? It was like an undercover story or something? <laughs> I went to the guy in the orange, man. I was paying close attention to him. I don't know if I spot it. Now tell me down below, man. We seek it, so let's help each other out. Did you guys spot anything wrong with that video? Yeah, something traumatic happened that changed my life. Check. Hmm. Panic Pete. That's the toy you squeeze, right? Is that an edit? Today we'll be talking about the slip mouth woman. The slip mouth woman is the spirit known for wearing the face mask that approaches her victims by asking them if they think she's pretty. If you answer with no, she'll kill you with a sharp weapon that she carries around. If you say yes, she'll take off her mask and ask you, am I pretty now? If you say no, she'll kill you with the sharp weapon. And if you say yes, she'll cut your mouth just like hers. Mm. The only known way to avoid her is to answer with maybe. This will confuse her and give you a chance to run away. But running doesn't always work because she tries to appear in front of you as you try to escape. Okay. Most That's unusual word, deaths in human history, part two. In 1975, a man in England named Alex Mitchell sat down to watch some TV after a long day's work laying down brick. He then tuned in to watch his favorite TV show, The Goodies. The Goodies were a trio of British comedians who had their own TV show from the 70s to the 80s. They were known for their sketches and physical comedy. Hmm. However, Alex was particularly amused by this episode's sketch, where a kilted Scotsman battles a man wielding a tube filled with sausage. Once Alex started laughing, he found himself unable to quit. Several minutes later, he was still laughing, and when you laugh for six minutes straight, your heart rate begins to increase rapidly. Fifteen minutes passed. As Alex continued to laugh, his heart rate began to increase even more, causing him to rapidly lose oxygen and him to lose control of his sphincter muscles. Mm. Twenty minutes later, his body became urgently deprived of oxygen, and he had a massive stroke, causing him to die of laughter. I don't laughter, what the hell? You've always heard, you know, that saying that, like, laughter is the cure to everything, but seems like even if you laugh too much, that can be it. I've never heard of that before, man. That's the first time hearing a case like that. Passed away because you was laughing too much? That's one of the most bizarre and insane cases we've heard yet. This definitely has to be in the top there now. This sounds totally made up until you listen to the police report. 
In the early 90s, a teenage girl started to see these shadowy figures that would come into her room at night and crawl all around her room and even grab at her legs. Mm -hmm. At the same time, her health began to rapidly deteriorate, which ultimately led to her death, which doctors never understood. A few days after her death, her sister woke up to a whistling sound and saw a creature crawling around her room with no face. The same night, her mom was ripped out of bed by someone. The father calls the police, who come over, they search the house, they don't find anything, it's all quiet. As they're about to leave, they hear something. Horrifying screams coming out of the bedroom. They run inside, no one's in there, but there are these huge gashes on the wall that were not there before. The police get out of there. In the police report that was filed immediately after this house call, the chief inspector and the three officers that were there that night swear they saw and heard the same things as the family, which means the police officially believed that the house was haunted. Okay, in writing. True case. When you finish this video, you're going to Google two words. In 2014, two Dutch college students were staying in Panama when they decided to take their host family's dog out for a walk. The dog returned, but the girls didn't. After 10 weeks without any leads, a local woman turned in a blue backpack that contained the girls' cell phones and their camera. Using their call log, they were able to determine that the girls would attempt to reach emergency services 77 times, all unsuccessful, starting just hours into their trip. It was also determined that five days after those 77 calls, somebody tried unsuccessfully several times to unlock the girls' phones. But the most distressing thing is what was found on the camera. The first set was taken on the day they left and they were totally normal. The second set was taken in the middle of the night over a week after they had left and it showed all their belongings neatly laid out on a rock and it showed one of the girls who appeared to be hurt. They found their remains spread out around the area where the backpack was found and some of their bones appeared to have been bleached. There is still no official cause of death or explanation as to what happened. Gotta be careful, man. Like, especially when you're traveling to these... Um, other parts of the country, man, you never know who's watching you. Except they try to get into, they try to call 77 times. Very eerie. It was all set up all over the place, man, they remain. Seekers, man, if you're traveling out of the country, man, you gotta be careful. Never know what could happen, man. Always be alert, always be aware. Same story. Seekers, if you guys made it with me to the end of the video, you're a true one seeking the truth. I greatly appreciate the support. Like I said, guys, um, thank you guys for joining me on my journey. Please make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, follow me on my social media. Man, we're growing. Let's continue to do that. Still doing these daily uploads for you guys. You guys can catch in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, man, and if you guys don't know what we do, man, we break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and, and unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank my supporters, man, who's tapping into the channel, watching the video entirely, hitting that post notification bell so you always get notified when I upload these videos, and hitting that like button on each and every single video. Guys, you guys don't know how much you guys are helping me out by just doing those three simple steps, man. Found this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best, Seekers. Let's seek the truth. Who were caught cheating? Part two. Talk in 1994, about it. on the day before the U.S. Figure Skating Championships, idol holder Nancy Kerrigan was filmed finishing a practice skate, but just seconds later, she was screaming in pain on the ground after a man with a police baton attacked her. The attack severely bruised her knee, which made her unable to compete. Her longtime rival Tanya Harding went on to take first place and was selected alongside her for that year's Winter Olympic skating team. However, police soon discovered that the attack on Kerrigan had been ordered by a bounty hunter. Whoa. In a Shocking twist of events, Tanya Harding's ex-husband Jeff Galuli and her once bodyguard Sean Eckhart were labeled as the culprits. They'd hired the bounty hunter to break Kerrigan's leg, removing Harding's competition in the upcoming events. Although she claimed she had no part in the conspiracy, Harding later admitted that she knew her ex-husband had been involved, but she failed to report it. But Karma had the last lap. At the games, a malfunction with her skates saw Tanya placed down in eighth, while Kerrigan managed a silver in second. That goes to show you, bro. That's proof of karma right there, man. She knew what was going to happen, man, to take out the competition. She ain't saying nothing about it, and she still got eight, and she still got eighth place. She didn't even get top, you know, top one or two, man, for the gold or silver medal. That's karma, Seekers, right there.
in 4K. Here are some things that 99% of humans can't do. Are you part of the 1%? The Here ability to raise eyebrows is an evolutionary trait that all of us can do. While pretty much everybody can raise their eyebrows, only 1% of the world can raise one eyebrow at once. Did you know that 99% of the it. world can't lick their elbow? So you probably can't do this, and I bet you're probably doing it right now. However, for some people, this task is actually really easy which is due to being born with really flexible bodies or practicing a lot of gymnastics. Only 2% of people can wiggle their ears. Unlike other face muscles, ear muscles are operated by a completely different part of your brain. If you try to use your face muscles to move your ears, it's never going to work. So you're going to have to raise your eyebrows and smile widely to lift your ears. And if you're lucky, you might be one of the few people that can move them. That can't. Seekers, can you guys do any of those things? I think I can redo the elbow joint. I think actually I can, but I can't do the edge joint. That's completely different. Or that one eyebrow, uh, you know, with the rock be doing. I cannot do that. <laughs> tell, tell me down below if you can do that, man. I'm actually curious if any of you guys can do that. These people have died. Part 5. In 2000, Burger King managers Lisa Goetz and Lori Thomas staged a fake robbery of the restaurant where Lori took the money and Lisa acted as the victim, bound with duct tape, and trapped in the walk-in cooler. Unfortunately, police didn't arrive until the next morning where they found Lisa, who died of hypothermia. According to investigators, Lisa could have easily freed herself from her bindings and escaped the unlocked refrigerator as she had no signs of forced restraint and the duct tape was loose. Mm. In 1998, during a heated marriage dispute a 25 year old man picked up his 20 year old wife and threw her off their eighth floor apartment balcony somehow the woman became entangled in the power lines below and in what may have been an effort to save her or maybe finish her off the men left from the balcony aiming for the wires he missed the power lines completely and plunged to his death and the woman managed to swing over to a nearby balcony and was saved that was an insane case especially the last one she had to aim for the power lines to completely miss, but she made it. So this man was frozen at nights for three days, and you won't believe what happened to him. Mm -hmm. His name is David Blaine, and he went inside a block of ice for three days with no food and only one tube supplying him with air and water. At the 61 hour mark, he was beginning to lose consciousness, but he couldn't go to sleep because if he leaned on the ice, he would have gotten severe frostbite. Unfortunately, this led him to have extreme hallucinations. Near the end of the stunt, he called his girlfriend over, but she was immediately pulled away. This made him think that he was dead and that she couldn't see him. After 63 hours, they decided to cut him out, but they said he was so delusional, he tried to grab the chainsaw. He finally made it out, but he was so physically and emotionally tired that he couldn't walk or talk. David was rushed to the hospital in critical condition, and after one month of therapy, he finally made a full recovery. If you're watching Man. horror movies and feel like something's watching you, this could be why. A family from Ecuador enjoyed watching horror movies together in their living room. But one night, during their late horror night session, they began to feel a strange presence with them in the living room. Scared, thinking they might have attracted an evil entity into their home, they placed a camera in their living room, and this is what they captured. Ahí sí, ahí sí. Ahí yo fue que ya comencé a sentirme mal. ¿Por qué? Porque mira, a ver. Eso yo sí lo vi claramente, así, de reojo. Mira, uy, sí viste, un cruz. Eso sí. family members is startled as a dark figure can be seen moving behind him. Mm. After this, objects began to fly across the room. And they just get out of there. The family will later call in a priest to bless the house, but the hauntings persist. This is the stuff of nightmares that's like straight out of the is that early legit seekers? has a lot to do with the dark web. Sometime around 2004, when people were just starting to explore what would later be known as the dark web, they would talk about a woman that would show up on your screen, except it wasn't a woman. It was a distorted mask of a woman's face. And what this person would do is that they would recite your full name and your address and then say, I'm coming for you. And then the whole screen would go dark. This is what they mean when they say okay. only 5% of the ocean has been explored. What kind of fish is this? Mm -hmm. Did that 
fish just eat a rock? I mean, like I said, it's true. We only um, explore like 5% of the ocean. So there could be some species down there that we haven't even seen before. Have you seen that fish before, man? I sure haven't. The more you know. That's good. Blood curdling facts that you wish you never knew. Part 16. Kangaroos are absolutely terrifying, and if you mess with one, it will likely lure you into the water and attempt to drown you. There's an abandoned Disney park that you aren't allowed to go to, and it was shut down in 1999 because it was infested with free-roaming alligators, the animals were being abused, and an 11-year-old boy died from a flesh-eating bacteria found in the park's waters. In the movie The Wizard of Oz, the lion's costume was made out of a real skinned lion. This is the John Lawson house. No one knows who lives there, but every single day, there are several female mannequins sitting on the front porch wearing a variety of clothing. Their positions and outfits change daily, and many believe this is meant to convey some sort of message. Mm. And in 1871, a train crash took place just 200 feet away from the home, killing 22 people. And these mannequins are always pointing toward the crash. Why? Is that a hyena or something? Yeah, the hyena's a girl. So many may know, female hyenas have a fake meat hose that looks almost identical to the real thing. And for those that don't... Uh, no, nah, actually, that's that's the lead. They have a pseudo phallus that they give birth from, and yes, it's as traumatizing as you think, and yes, the very process of birth can end up doing the exact opposite for everyone involved. But Loki, mm. having a built-in flesh scrap might explain why hyenas are exactly the way they are. So for most animals, life pretty much comes down to the three Fs, food, fights, and... <laughs> So a lot of times when male animals run a fade, it's for the goal of female validation. A hyena's having a female fifth leg means they have a natural crotch block. It's basically anti-mating hardware that means the no pants dance can only happen if she allows it. So unlike things like lions or bears, there's really no reason for male hyenas to want to smoke with each other when getting it in is already RNG. Mm. Pun intended. And it's believed having coitus completely out of their control is why male hyenas are way less aggressive and even have less testosterone than the females. Meanwhile, the females are more on go than a green light. And why hyena sisters are way more likely to put each other on a t-shirt. And with them being pack animals with a whole social ladder, the walking comedy club had to become more aggressive just to give their cubs a chance at life. Matter of fact, that's probably why they have more testosterone. So yeah, moral of this video. Lion King did hyenas every type of dirty, but they got it right when they had Shanti giving orders. And now you know why. This is why you should be scared of that one person you're Just talking that to together. online that you're about to meet in real life. Blanca Arellano, a 51-year-old Mexican woman, was looking for love. She met a Peruvian man named Juan Villafuerte on an online gaming app. And on the last day of October, she traveled 3,000 miles to Lima, Peru to meet him. She mm. thought that he could be the one. On November 7th, while in the beach city of Huacho, where Villafuerte lived, Blanca spoke to her niece on the phone and told her that the relationship was going well and that she was in love. Then, she went silent. Her niece suspected something was wrong after not being able to get into contact with her. She called for help on Twitter and reached out to Juan Villafuerte, who said that Blanca got bored of him and left to find a plane ticket back to Mexico, as he could not provide the life she wanted. But the truth was much, much darker. On November 10th, Peruvian authorities found a severed finger on the beach of Huacho. Then in the following days, they found a faceless head and then an arm and then a torso with no organs inside of it. They eventually identified Blanca Arellano via her family by the ring on her finger. Juan Villafuerte was arrested on charges of human organs trafficking. Authorities found traces of blood all over his apartment, and he reportedly posted TikTok videos of human organs days after Blanca's disappearance. Creepy last words well, you said right to. before dying. A nursing assistant said that she was in a long-term patient's room changing the sheets. The patient would periodically look behind her. She asked the patient what was wrong, and the patient looked in her eyes and asked, He doesn't scare you? The nurse was confused, and she asked her who she was referring to, and the patient said, the big man in the top hat. He's standing right behind you. She said that she doesn't think that she has ever finished changing a bed sheet and repositioning a patient as fast as she did that night. Mm -hmm. She refused to go into that room by herself for the rest of her shift. Linda Johnson, a former nurse, said that she had a gentleman in his late 90s who was dying. He started screaming blood-curdling screams so they raced to his room. He was screaming that the room was on fire and that there was a man with large horns peering out of the flames. He kept pointing to one wall, saying that it was on fire. The nurses turned on the lights and tried to calm and console him, but to no avail. Instead of being consoled, 
Linda said that he told her that she was on fire and that he could see her being consumed by flames. Linda said that it was the creepiest thing that has ever happened to her. The mm. doctor was notified, but nothing relieved the patient's terrifying hallucinations. He died soon after. Cynthia said that several years ago, her 20-year-old daughter had brain surgery. She got an infection of the spinal fluid. She was there in grave condition for a month. Cynthia never left her daughter's side. One night, the worst night at this point, she asked who the man in black was that was standing by the bathroom and why Cynthia's deceased brother, the girl's uncle, was standing next to her at the side of the bed. Cynthia immediately got the chills. She told her daughter, they're not here. Then she told her brother and the man in the black, whom she couldn't see, you both have to go now. She's not ready to go and I'm not ready to let her go. After that night, her daughter started to get better and better each day. Today, her daughter is doing well. September 25th, mm. 1981, something very strange took place up in the Smoky Mountains. This is a picture of Pauline Melton, and it would end up being one of the last known photos of her. Because while Pauline was up there, she was with two hiking companions. They described that she all of a sudden, without explanation, just started to rapidly speed up. They even described that they mm -hmm. called out to her. They were asking Pauline, where are you going, Pauline? She never answered. She never looked back until she crossed over a hill. Since that exact moment, Pauline was never seen again. And to this day, they still have no idea where she went and why she did it. Isn't that crazy, Seekers, man? You could just if you could go in the woods and just jump off the face of the earth. Man, that's how I'm going, man. You got to go with a big, big group, bro. I don't want nobody Donald happen. Trump was shot this afternoon at a political rally in Pennsylvania. As you can see right here, this was moments after the shots were fired. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have all the information right now, but obviously he is still alive. And the footage is absolutely disturbing. In the clip, you can hear multiple gunshots ring out. The audience starts screaming. Trump drops to the ground. He is covered quickly by the Secret Service agents. In the broadcast footage, he grasps his ear, so he may have been grazed by a bullet up there. Like I said, we don't have all the information. This is a developing story, but this isn't the first time that someone has tried to assassinate a president or former president. In 1912, an assassin attempted to end the life of Teddy Roosevelt as he was on the campaign trail. This man was former salon keeper John Schrank, and he would later claim that William McKinley's ghost had visited him in a dream and told mm -hmm. him to avenge him for his assassination. Teddy Roosevelt, after being shot, continued with his speech, even as he profusely bled through the front of his shirt. And while he didn't end up getting elected that year, doctors at the time said that it was safer for him to keep the bullet inside his body than attempt to remove it. So, for the rest of his life, he carried on with a bullet lodged in his chest. Then, in 1981, Whoa. someone attempted to assassinate Ronald Reagan. This photo was actually taken just moments before the shots were fired. Three people were injured in this attack, but nobody died. And obviously, as you guys probably already know, Ronald Reagan survived. He was in critical condition when he was rushed to the hospital, but nobody ended up passing away from this assassination attempt. The guy who did it was named John Hinckley Jr. And weirdly enough, he had been obsessed with actress Jodie Foster after watching the film Taxi Driver, and he claimed that he had carried out the assassination attempt in an attempt to impress her. And interestingly enough, he just signed a record deal last year and will be releasing a folk album soon. Really? What the hell? Aubrey was a 13-year-old girl who went to Ocean Springs, Meadows, School in 
Johnny Boy. The reason Johnny or any of us age is because our cells are constantly dividing, making fresh copies of our DNA in each new cell. Our DNA is packed into chromosomes, and since DNA duplication isn't perfect, the tips of these chromosomes are slightly trimmed on every replication. Sort of like making a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. Mm. The quality slightly degrades each time. To protect against this, our chromosomes have something called telomeres on their tips, which essentially contain junk DNA data that we can afford to lose. But even these telomeres are finite. They get shorter and shorter on every duplication until at some point they're fully gone. Then the cell stops dividing, gradually loses its function and withers away. The more this happens in our cells, the more we age and our bodies experience age-related characteristics. Scientists like David Sinclair are currently getting really close to reversing this process in human cells. He's developed what he refers to a chemical cocktail that can reprogram the way our cells are read to sort of fill in the blanks from these imperfections in our DNA replication. Mm. The science behind it is quite extensive, and he ran tests on lab mice that were incredibly successful. Having mice born at the same time with one looking visibly older than the other says that human trials are planned to start within the decade, and it's just a matter of time before we start seeing success in that. So where does this live forever come from? Obviously, the first version of this cocktail won't be perfect. It may extend human life to, let's say, 150 years. Now remember our test subject, Johnny Boy? In 20 years, he'll be 20, at which time we're almost guaranteed to be undergoing human trials at the very least, if not already, publicly available. This life potion is given to Johnny so that he can live until 150. The claim states that by the time Johnny is 40, we're almost guaranteed to make enough advancement to double the anti-aging cocktail so that now he can live till 300. 20 years later, when he's 60, the potion will be approved so that he can live till 500 years old. By the time he's 80, he can live till 1,000. These numbers are all arbitrary, but the general principle still holds up. Even if we start seeing diminishing returns in the improvements of this concoction, Auction, Johnny has already hacked his way into living forever. He can already live till a thousand at this point, so even if it takes a hundred more years to improving the medicine to living till, say, two thousand years old, he'll live until then and take it. Constantly outliving the improvement curve of anti-aging until they've cracked the code to the million year potion, at which point Johnny Boy is essentially immortal. Which means one of two things absolutely must happen in our future. One, we colonize other planets, or two, we stop having babies. If people are living forever and no longer dying, our population will continue to grow and just grow and grow. At which point we either mm. need more space to put people like other planets or we gotta stop making people. So unless we want to sterilize the entire human race, living forever probably isn't a good idea until we figure this multi-planetary business out. Things that show... What do you guys think about that theory, Seekers? The age gap, but it just kept going and going and going, man. They're working on stuff, man, to make us not age no more. We live forever trying to make us immortal. What do you guys think about that? Show off the power of time, part seven. Disney World has had about 58 million visitors per year since it opened in 1971. And during those visits, guests would often have to wait in lines that were organized by rope walkways. And if you look closely at the rope clips, you can see that they've started to wear down. Some have even created a new groove. And no, I'm not mm. talking about Cusco. Next, watching waves at the shoreline might seem like a calming activity, but not if you're a resident of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Over time, the waves wore the shoreline and even took a huge chunk out of it. Now, this would usually Ooh. take several years for the effects to be seen. But in the case of Green Bay, this all happened within the span of an hour. Wow, what the hell? The power of water. And lastly, water. we're told that tattoos are permanent, but this may not be the case. Because this guy got a tattoo of a flower on the palm of his hand. And in just two and a half months, the tattoo mostly vanished. This is mainly because our palms experience a lot of friction from how often we rub our hands. So if you want a tattoo, you might want to avoid your palm. Bro, I think I said that's most wholesome animal on earth. Brother, if you wanted a manatee video, you could have just asked. Did you know when alligators and manatees cross paths on the water, the alligators seem to let them pass? A prehistoric sledgehammer, and they give manatees the right away. That's how you know you got motion in the ocean. There's never been a record mm -hmm. of a manatee attacking a human, and it might be because it's literally physically impossible. One is because their teeth are way in their mouths, and their mold is designed for grinding grass, not biting. You know, if you ever get bit by a manatee, that means you were in his throat. And if you were, that means this law was for you. Some things don't need exploring Columbus. Also, some scientists think that because adult manatees have no predators and because they don't have to fight each other over who eats what grass, there's a lot of talk that the sea squishy is mentally incapable of feeling aggression. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I will say three things. One, they don't just eat grass. They'll go pescatarian if the opportunity presents itself. Mm -hmm. Two, as fast as you think manatees are, they're faster. It might not be with malicious intent, but 1,200 pounds of anything moving like that is definitely cause to pause. And three, last year a popular manatee named Q past tense after essentially explicit interaction with a bigger male named Buffett tore him open like a reverse butt birth. The catch? 
Buffett was his brother. Yeah, that's pretty bad, but did you know mantises are also closely related to my favorite animal? They even got the same nail tech. So yeah, I'm a little biased, so I'ma let it slide. Especially since I'm pretty sure it wasn't aggression, but just a dangerous lack of awareness. But yeah, God bless this water blimp and uh, R.I.P. Hugh. R.I.P. Hugh, bro. I don't know mantises were related to like elephants. I saw that. We learn new things every day, Seekers, Don't man. Freak out, but we are right now entering the beginning of the end of the universe. 95% of all the stars that will ever form have already formed. And it gets even crazier than that. There is a sphere around us called the Hubble Sphere. Beyond this point, everything is moving away from us faster than the speed of light mm. due to the expansion of space itself. And how many of the galaxies do you think are outside of this sphere? 94% of all the galaxies we can see are beyond this boundary today. Meaning, no matter how hard we try, if there are aliens living in these galaxies, we will never be able to meet them. 60,000 stars pass beyond this horizon every single second. That's nearly 2 million solar systems we can mm. no longer visit since the start of this video. This will continue until we are all alone. The universe as we know it, with all the beautiful galaxies and nebulae, will slowly fade away into darkness. And the astronomers of the future will point their telescopes everywhere, finding the same thing. Darkness and silence for the rest of eternity. Here are horrible things done by very uh -huh. influential people. Everyone knows Steve Jobs for founding Apple. But what most people don't know is the dark side of his personal life. He had an on and off relationship with a woman named Kristen Brennan, and this led to a messy pregnancy and a years long paternity battle. Steve Jobs refused to help Brennan and their child financially, and she had to go on welfare. Now eventually, he did help his daughter, but only because Brennan came forward about his behavior in an interview with Time Magazine in 1982. Before becoming a popular kids book oh. author, Theodore Seuss Geisel, aka Dr. Seuss, served in the animation department of the United States Army during World War II. He wrote training and propaganda films, and designed posters to get people signed up to join the army. But a lot of his work at the time made the Japanese look really horrible. And this carried on into his earlier books. And Mother Teresa helped provide health care to the sick and the poor. But her actions behind the scenes were questionable, to say the least. It's been reported that her care involved these people allegedly going through a forced conversion to Catholicism, which involved children being baptized without their parents' consent. She also allegedly hid the actions of priests who were behaving inappropriately around children, and used charity funds for her own medical care. Yeah, this is not what Jesus would do. This teacher was caught doing Keep it with taking a great student. And apparently it was almost daily. The kid was 13 years old and now she will serve 10 years in prison. This happened in Texas. The teacher behind me, her name is Alexandria Vera. She's 25 years old and this 13 year old got her pregnant. She stated the relationship happened in the Instagram DMs and his family apparently approved of this relationship. The judge and the school district said that they want their teachers to teach students, not put their hands all over their students. She was originally going to get 30 years in prison, but the judge said, eh, I don't think she's that bad and gave her 10 years. Apparently this relationship blossomed in 2015 around summertime. The boy kept advancing, she kept denying, but eventually she gave in apparently. Prosecutors said based on evidence, they did it daily for nine months straight. And apparently during the entire ordeal to get away with this, she told her neighbors that the boy was her brother. And now it gets even weirder. She even moved his father in with her so she could pretend she was dating the father when in reality she was the kid. This was kind of a mask. She was also paying for the family's groceries and phone bill. This kid literally had a sugar mom. Now, Alexandria Vera has a six-year-old daughter that even called the 13-year-old kid her dad. What an interesting case. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're from Houston, Texas, did you hear about this case around you guys? As always, these videos are for informational purposes only. Once again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I definitely feel like she should have served life for this. She knew exactly what she was doing, but the court system was pretty lenient on her. I may get uh, oh, wow. caught right away. Basically, if I get caught, I'm just going to shoot myself. So, I, mean, I could basically be dead in two weeks or three weeks. I don't know the chance at this point. The video you just saw was made by murderer Peter Keller, who in 2012 murdered his wife and daughter before taking his own life. Now, in the lead-up to murdering his family, Peter actually made a series of disturbing vlogs. He took a handy cam out with him into the woods and showed him preparing for something. He actually was creating an underground bunker stocked with all sorts of supplies like candy and beans. And during these videos, he talks to the camera very candidly and it's some really disturbing stuff. The videos offer a glimpse into the mind of a killer who's on edge. He didn't know at the time whether or not he could actually follow through with murdering his wife and daughter. 
but unfortunately he did. On April 22nd, 2012, after constructing the bunker in the woods unbeknownst to his family, Peter shot both his wife Lynette and his daughter Kayleen in the face with a silenced weapon before he set his house on fire. He then fled to the underground bunker and was able to evade capture by the police for a whopping six days. But once authorities figured out where Peter was, they surrounded the bunker with a SWAT team, and that's when he fired the fatal shot into his own head, taking his own life. In his video recordings, Peter talks about how it'll be exciting to live out in the bunker, and he discusses his fantasy of robbing banks and pharmacies and living on the run. But his run didn't last that long, and he left behind so many questions and a trail of blood and sadness. If you want to hear more stories like this, listen to the podcast Murder in America that I co-host with my wife, Courtney. It's available now on all streaming platforms. It's a tragic case, man. Truly tragic. You guys, if you guys made it with me to the end of the video, your true seeker seeking the truth. I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, guys, make sure you guys, man, follow me on all my social medias, man. Links in the description down below, guys. Also, man, hit that post notification bell. Also, man, hit that like button, man. That's very important, man. It's gonna push this in the algorithm. We're gonna take off one day, man. But we just going step by step by now. And I really appreciate the support I have um, for right now. You guys gonna catch in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do is, man. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel just want to thank the um supporters man who's tapping in with us man subscribe to the channel hitting that post notification bell especially man hitting that like button man you guys are pushing us in the algorithm that's very important so i appreciate the support found this video for you guys today let's do what we do best seekers man let's seek the truth cartoon theories part one, Angelica go. from the Rugrats is the only one who can talk to the babies because they are a figment of her imagination. Mm -hmm. That's why Stu is always in his basement making toys for the son that he lost. Chucky died in a car crash, that's why his dad's always so nervous. And the twins were actually only one baby, but Angelica didn't know if it was a boy or a girl, so she invented both of them. SpongeBob is a result mm -hmm. of nuclear testing. The nuclear testing was performed in the Bikini Atoll in the late 1940s, and the result of that test was the Bikini Bottom. Ooh. And how many times have you seen this explosion in the show? Quick lost cartoon. He was spitting, bro. We've seen that explosion happen in SpongeBob many times, man. And about those, um, about the first three, about the kids and stuff, about how we, sometimes we can never see their parents. You know, it's starting to make sense, man. These, you know, these are childhood cartoons. These are freaking. <laughs> Details we weren't paying attention to, man, because we were just entertained. It's crazy to think about. Two episodes, part two. Squidward's suicide. The episode starts with Squidward sitting on his bed with creepy music playing in the background. And you get flashes of the children. And when it cuts back to Squidward, his face is black with red eyes. And then a strange voice tells him to shoot himself with a gun. He does exactly that, he dies, and the video ends. Mm. Even the police investigated, but they couldn't find who made the video. What? Creepy Lost Cartoon Episodes Part 3 mm. Tom's Basement Something seemed different with the start of the episode this time. Tom's owner was really physically abusive. He was stepping on his tail and telling him never to go down the basement. And at some point Jerry pushes Tom down to the basement. When the owner sees him he starts yelling at him with rage. Then Jerry takes pity on Tom and goes and stabs the owner repeatedly with a knife on his leg. And then mm. they carry the body inside the basement. And the basement is full of dead bodies showing signs of violent death. And then an evil look covers Jerry's face. He stabs Tom and throws him in the pile of bodies. Then the episode ends with Jerry putting a for sale sign outside the house and laughing manically. I've never seen that episode of Tom and Jerry. And I've seen quite a few. I don't know where, where the hell he's finding them from, but hey man, we seekers, bro, we're gonna have to do our research and try to dig this up. Fun fact, man, my, parent, my grandparents actually int introduced me to Tom and Jerry. That's how I even knew about that series. But damn, that's some dark stuff. Especially, you know how Jerry always be, you know, getting Tom. That's his op. But at the end, man, he turned on him. That does sound like something Jerry would do, but you know, he'd be setting up all those elaborate plans. So, can't 
can't wait to solve. There is a creepy lost episode of Barney that a father swears he caught his kids watching. Hmm. One day he was looking at the TV guide when he saw that it said a lost episode of Barney was going to air at 7pm. He asked his kids if they wanted to watch and they said yes. They all sat down to watch it and the theme song started playing but something wasn't right about it. It oh. almost sounded like the song was being whispered. The episode started as it usually did, the kids holding the Barney doll that suddenly comes to life. But when Barney started talking he sounded slightly weird. It sounded like two Two people were talking at once. Mm. His normal voice and one that sounded darker and scarier. And suddenly he said, Hi kids, today I'm going to talk to you about death. So one of the kids asked him, Barney, what's death? He then chuckled and said, This is. With his face suddenly turning angry, his teeth growing long, and then he eats the child. What and then the? he proceeds to chase all the other children around trying to eat them throughout the rest of the episode. And then at the very end of the episode, he sang the I Love You song as if nothing happened. So, love. The Simpsons mm. lost episode, Bart's dead. What? The episode comes to us at season one. After leaving for school late, this results in Bart Simpson being late for a plane ride and has to catch another one. Apparently, the plane was having some engine trouble and it crashes, killing everybody on board, Ooh. even our beloved Bart Simpson. Throughout the majority of the episode, it's all about mourning from the family over the loss of Bart until a flashback shows Bart inside of a coffin going to a cemetery. Inside of the cemetery where Bart is laid to rest, there are headstones depicting celebrities. One noted celebrity was Michael Jackson from season three and predicted his death on point. Ooh. Hey man, we've known about the Simpsons, about these like the Simpsons family guy, these how some these cartoons, how they be predicting stuff before it even happens. So he was definitely spitting there, man. You know the Simpsons been running for a long time, but the hit that they predicted what was gonna happen to him, Michael Jackson. It's crazy to think about, man. We gotta pay attention, man. When the Simpsons or Family Guy, when they show us something, bro, I just you gotta pay attention to it because you never know, man, if, if it could come true or not. They actually have some videos, and I'm definitely gonna have to check out. Apparently, there was a man who found a very disturbing and creepy lost episode of the Teletubbies, and it was known as the Playground, which he rented from a DVD store. Hmm. When the man brought the DVD up to the counter so he could rent it, the clerk's eyes got big and said, Are you sure you want to rent this? It was claimed to be cursed. The man said, Absolutely. What could be cursed and horrifying about a Teletubby episode? So, he went through with the rent, and as soon as he got home, he slapped the disc in the DVD player. As soon as the episode started, it skipped past the BBC logo, and where the speaker usually says, Time for Teletubbies. Tubbies, he said something completely different, like life isn't about anything, it's about consequences. Mm. Although the man thought this was weird for a kid's show, he kept watching. The episode started with Tinky Winky sitting at a table crying by himself, and out the back window of the Teletubbies house, you could see two children practicing seppuku, which is basically taking the guts and entrails out of somebody and playing with them. TV then glitched and cut to a scene where all the Teletubbies were hanging from gallows by their necks and seeping out blood. There's more, so stay tuned for part two. This Whoa. is part two of the cursed Teletubbies episode known as The Playground. While the Teletubbies were all bleeding out, hanging there from the gallows, you could see blood and organs scattered all across Teletubby land, and the speaker mm. in the background was repeatedly saying, life is meaningless, and the truth is, you're all going to die a horrifying death. But little did they know that them hanging by their necks from the gallows wouldn't be the cause of their death, but rather a nuclear bomb that would end up hitting Teletubby land and causing the sun baby in the sky to start bleeding from his eyes and begin crying. So in the background of the Teletubbies already hanging from their necks from the gallows, you see their home catch on fire, a nuclear bomb going off and even the baby in the sky along with bleeding from its eyes and face mm. is now vomiting across Teletubby land. The show then glitched ended abruptly and skipped straight to the credits and rather than showing the ragdoll productions logo that is usually shown at the end of Teletubby mm. episodes it showed a bunch of random Russian and Ukrainian writing that the viewer had never seen before. The episode then received 237 complaints and was taken off the air. Wow so that really happened man those the parents they must have saw it wrote in any complaints then that got taken down man i'm just surprised like we haven't seen that like you know i haven't heard no news about like you know all these dark cartoon theories and stuff like that maybe if you search on youtube you can find it but it's like somehow it's kind of being like hidden from us man because these are my first time even hearing these theories like this especially when it comes to the cartoons they all put this in the media man they trying to hide it from us man but we won't see and we won't find the truth can't hide it forever. Okay. Damn, 
that fairly odd pants, bro. Eddie. Eddie. That will ruin your childhood. Part one. Here we go. One of the most influential cartoons ever, Scooby Doo has a deep, dark secret. The reason that the gang has never aged over the years is because they're actually not even alive. They're freelancing spirits wandering from town to town in order to expose fake ghosts to maybe one day rest their own soul. And there's a reason that all the fish under the sea can talk and move around. Why? It's believed that the town of Bikini Bottom is below the island of Bikini Atoll, an island that the U.S. bombed 23 times during the Cold War to test nuclear weapons. All that radio fallout went into the ocean and created the characters that we know and love today. This is the lost episode mm. of Winnie the Pooh known as Making Friends the Easy Way. Mm. This episode begins with Winnie waking up out of his sleep and as he examines the room, he notices that his door is wide open. Mm. Scared and quite frankly probably pretty confused, Winnie starts frantically asking questions like hello, is anyone there, can anyone hear me, as he's making his way out the door. Mm. When he got outside, Winnie began looking around and noticed that there was nobody in sight, no animals, no people and when he felt like his friends just left him and neglected him Ooh. so when he gets angry thinking his friends left him and he drops to his knees and begins punching the ground saying i don't deserve this i need friends i have to go find some friends so when he begins walking through the woods looking for friends and he notices a little boy who waves at him so winnie the pooh walks up to him and does this when he walked up to the boy and said friends forever then instantly grew sharp teeth opened his mouth very wide and ate the child alive Man, that sounds like it came out of that freaking, you know, that um horror movie. Because, you know, since Winnie the Pooh is not an IP no more, it sounds like one of those movies, man. It took a dark turn like that. These creepy lost episodes, man, of, of the cartoons. Man, just freaking exposing our reality, man. Wide open. Who would've, I would have never guessed that any of this would have happened in a thousand years, man. You know, looking back at it. All these things and stuff, man, like I said, kind of makes sense. Especially one about the SpongeBob there, about like how Audie was talking because they said all the testing that took place, that's how it can talk. That's how Bikini Bottom even, that's how it existed. That's how it came to be. Man. Crazy, crazy theories, man, that got, that got shown to us today. We're gonna have to dig deep, man. Find out some. We're gonna have to find some more. <sighs> That's crazy. Seekers, if you guys stay with me to the end of the video, you're a true seeker, man. Like seek, seeking the truth, just like us, man. I really appreciate the support. Like I said, guys, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, hit that post notification, man, so we can grow in this algorithm. And also, man, follow me. Like I said, down below my social, so we can always stay connected. We can stay together. You guys can send me videos you guys want me to check out man like i said i'm trying to work on making a discord so you guys can just send me your videos you guys want me to check out but that's coming soon you guys are catching the next one i'm out peace youtube what's up youtube welcome back to my channel how you guys doing hopefully you guys are doing all right man if you guys are brand new to the channel you guys don't know what we do we break down scary and creepy videos man on the net on the web from youtube videos to tiktok videos ig videos, facebook anything weird usual and unexplained you can find right here on this channel just want to thank my supporters man who's tapping into the channel subscribing hitting that post notification bell man and hitting that like button on each and every video i really appreciate it you guys don't know how much you guys are helping us out just by doing those three simple steps find this video for you guys today let's do what we do best man let's seek the truth Talking about the World Cup, let's talk about how this soccer player was murdered after he lost the game. On June 22, 1994, Andres Escobar, who was the captain of Colombia's soccer team, was playing against the U.S. and scored in his own net during the World Cup. Colombia ended up losing the game 2-1 to one and was eliminated. Ten days later, Andres was confronted by a group of men outside a club in the city of Medellin. These men began harassing Andres and making fun of him for shooting in his own net, and even though he tried to reason with them, they 
shot him six times. The next day, police arrested Umberto Castro Munoz, who was associated with powerful criminals and drug traffickers. It's been said that the criminals that Umberto was working with were betting a lot of money on Colombia to win, and when they lost because of Andres' mistake, then they ordered Umberto to murder him. Umberto was sentenced to 43 years in prison, but only served 11 years before being released for good behavior. More than 120,000 people attended Andres' funeral, and Colombia created a statue of him in 2002. Oh, some money, bro. Oh, a soccer game as well? This boy mm. was forced to live as a girl. In 1965, twin boys were born, and they went by the name of Bruce and Brian, and they were born in Winnipeg, Canada. By eight months old, the boys ended up getting a condition, and the only way to fix it was to get a circumcision done, and in the end, Bruce was the only one who got it done. Unfortunately, Bruce got a botched circumcision, which burned off his whole private part. Man. The family was referred to Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore to speak with the Dr. John Money, and he recommended a surgical sex change from male to female. Bruce's parents agreed to the procedure, thinking that this was the best option. The procedure was successful, and instead of Bruce, now their name was Brenda. By the age of two, Brenda would rip off her dresses, refuse to play with dolls, and just wanted to play with toy cars and guns. Mm. Brenda complained to her parents and teachers that she felt like a boy and they just told her that she was going through a phase. At the age of 14, a local psychiatrist told Brenda's parents that they just needed to tell Brenda the truth and once they did, Brenda just felt like everything finally made sense. Brenda embarked on the painful process to go back to a male and once all that was done, Brenda was now David. Although David was able to be a boy again, he was traumatized with his past when he would go to annual doctor visits with his twin brother, and Dr. John Money would make them do sexual acts on each other, and he would take photos of them. Although they both what? resisted to doing these activities, Dr. John Money would get very angry with them, and they were honestly very scared of him. Dr. John Money claimed that this was important for healthy adult gender identity. Unfortunately, due to the traumatizing childhood, David's brother ended up taking his life in 2002, and just two years later, David ended up taking his own life as well. Blood curdling facts that you wish you never knew. Part 17. There's an eight year old boy named Amarjeet Sada who became the world's youngest serial killer after murdering his six year old cousin, his baby sister, and a neighbor's newborn daughter. The, the CIA has a legitimate heart attack gun and it was exposed to the public in the late 1970s. Ooh. Project Sunshine was research conducted by the U.S. government in which after the atomic bombings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, a network of agents was recruited to locate recently deceased children and steal their body parts for testing on radiation. Both the U.S. and Russia used dolphins and whales to spy on various countries. Mm -hmm. The FBI sent an anonymous letter to Martin Luther King Jr. telling him to kill himself. It reads, King. There is only one thing left for you to do. You know what it is. Guys, I just released my first YouTube video. I'm sure you'll love it. Link in bio. That's crazy. I never knew that the last part, especially concerning Dr. Martin Luther King, man. Goes to show you how sometimes our, how corrupt our nation is. And we use whales and dolphins to spy on other countries, USA and Russia. What the hell? They train the animals to be capable of that. Got eyes and ears everywhere. Worst plane crash ever recorded. That's an edit. We, we knew how to call those out seekers. He literally caught it at the end. Said as well. Never listen to this song if you're in the Philippines. It's called My Way by Frank Sinatra. If you listen to this song in the Philippines, you might literally die. It's so cursed that it has its own crime class there. It has been even banned in karaoke bars. It used to incite people at bars and led to a large amount of killings. Mm. But won't you listen to it? No, 
not hearing knowing that information. Yo, what's up? Here's some scary facts about our world that you probably didn't want to know, part 12. I guess you could start saying that zombies are real, and the reason I say that is because there is a sickness called walking corpse syndrome, in which the brain starts to believe that it's dead, and that it has no soul, and it starts to make you act like a zombie. Yikes. So while we're talking about zombies, I thought I would go ahead and mention this fact to you. Back in the day, there was a serial killer named Jeffrey Dahmer, and what he would do with his victims is he would try to make sex zombies out of them by drilling holes in their head and pouring acid down the hole. What? There were over 15 dead bodies found in Benjamin Franklin's basement. Is there something the history books aren't telling us? Mm -hmm. I didn't even want to say this one because it kind of freaked me out too, but if you get bruises a lot, it could be signs of a spirit trying to contact you, as well as a lot of other ways. A man was one being held at gunpoint on a video on the dark web and was forced to eat his wife's organs or he would have died. Here is how you can Whoa. survive a piranha attack. Let's say that you find yourself in the Amazon River surrounded by piranhas. What you should do is first of all stay as still as possible and don't make any kind of noise, don't even scream for help, because they locate their prey with their excellent hearing. Now start moving really slow towards deeper water, where it's colder and the currents are stronger, so there won't be any piranhas there. But you may find a crocodile. But hey, now you know how to survive a piranha attack. Would you guys take that advice, man? For the piranha attack? Why you should never do this. This is 17-year-old Michael Dumas. He was on a church trip to Florida with some of his friends. While on this trip, they went to Pompano Beach, and he would be buried in the sand as you see here. He'd soon be unburied and all would be well until later that night when he would wake up in the middle of the night and be itching like crazy and sweating. At first, this would be labeled as an ear infection and he would be sent home with drops, but it would soon be obvious that that's not what it was as he started to develop these raised bumpy rashes and he became pretty lethargic just wanting to sleep all the time. It got even worse to the point where he was having these big nasty blisters. And that's when he'd finally be diagnosed with cutaneous larva migraines, which is pretty much dog or cat hookworm. So pretty much these work by the dog or the cat pooping in the sand and contaminating it. And then not long after, these microscopic larvae hatch. And then you step in this contaminated sand and you end up looking like Michael. After all of this, he ended up developing a staph infection as well. Mm. And if it's not bad enough just him getting infected, five others from this trip got infected with hookworm as well. Okay, because I... Shoot, I'm never probably about to walk on the beach again, man. Not with my uh, freaking bare foot. Goes to show you, you never knew. I didn't, know, I didn't know something like that was possible, man. People bringing their pets on the beach and letting them pee and poop and not cleaning it up. I like what it caused. We're in socks from now on the beach. That's exactly what I thought when I saw the video. Like, I've met goats before, okay? Their eyes are hella creepy and they look like this. Now tell me what the hell that is. <laughs> and that's why many people believe that this is actually a skinwalker trying to enter the girl's home. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then watch my latest video. It's staring into my soul. It is. I'm about to say uh, skinwalk. I was just about to say that. We've seen that a couple of times watching these clips together, man. So that was my logical guess. Let's just go. Edit. Twin paradox day. Let me get a pair of twins. All right. They're born the same time. They're the same age. And now one of them, I will send off. 90% the speed of light. And the other I'll keep down here on Earth. So we can ask, how does their how, how, how does their aging rates compare? Mm -hmm. Okay? Turns out, this twin that I've already sent, his clock ticks 44% as fast as this twin's clock. Our clock here on Earth. So this twin is aging more slowly than this one. That's at 90% the speed of light. Let's pump it up some more. How about 99% the speed of light? Now the time takes at only 14% the rate as it does back here on Earth. How about 99.9%? Keep pushing We're it. We're getting closer and closer to the speed of light itself. And at that speed, the clock ticks only 4.5% as fast. Slower. So. What does this mean? I'll tell you what it means. This twin that travels for five years and comes back, 
if they went at 99.9% the speed of light, after five years, they're five years older, we have aged 110 years. Damn. It's called the twin paradox. These are videos you can Whoa. never watch at night. We all know how there's some videos where you just can't watch them at night because nope. they're that scary. Well, in this series, I'll be showing you all of those videos. So, be ready to get terrified. Bring it on. <laughs> Who are you? Well, I know I'm not sleeping after watching that video. This video has been going viral recently and nobody knows the origins of it. Hmm. It shows what appears to be a ghostly woman standing outside of some man's window at night. And she says something took her daughter and did this to her. But nobody knows what that is. The man who uploaded the video hasn't updated anybody on if he's seen her again, or if he's okay, leaving people to worry about him. Oh. But I can't imagine looking out my window at night and seeing this. Let's talk about this picture. This is why if I ever have kids, I'll never let them use the bathroom alone. A okay. seven-year-old girl and her mom were headed to Target, and she was getting some clothes for school. Her mom also wanted to grab some snacks for movie night. So while her mom went to go grab popcorn and other snacks, she told her daughter to go pick out clothes for school. When her daughter finally finished and picked out the clothes, she went up to her mom and said something strange happened. A sad pale lady had came up to her, telling her that she wished she could have her own daughter that looked just like her. Hmm. The mom, who thought the daughter was just joking around, laughed it off and said, let's go. While heading to the register, the daughter shook her mom and said, that's the lady who told me she wanted a daughter just like me, pointing at a mannequin. The mom laughed, thinking the daughter was still being silly. Okay. You know how kids like have wild imaginations, always playing around. While at the register, the daughter had to go to the bathroom. So the mom told her to hurry up. It was only a couple hours down, by the way. While in the bathroom, the daughter texted the mom saying the pale lady's in here who wanted a daughter. The mom tried to get in a rush back home to her other kid said hurry up we have to go stop playing around 10 minutes later and the daughter never came out the Whoa. mother who was waiting outside the bathroom at this time rushes in the bathroom to see what the heck is going on the daughter was nowhere to be found she even checked the stalls to see if her daughter was hiding standing on a toilet or something on one of the stalls she found her daughter's cell phone on the floor by the way if you made it this far in the video comment down below your favorite fruit mine is mangoes when she checked her phone this was the last image found in it police still to this day have no explanation on what happened to that little girl Maybe what your kids say man you might think they have a wide imagination hey, sisters had a competition to see who could get their dad to sleep with them first yeah you did hear that right this brings us to travis field grove and his 17 year old daughter samantha kirshner so in 2018, Samantha would express interest to her mom that she wanted to meet her dad as she had always longed for him to be in her life and they'd start to grow closer and she'd also form a close relationship with her half-sister in the process. So at this time, her half-sister and Samantha are fighting for her dad's attention and they come up with this competition to see who can get the dad to sleep with him first. And it really wouldn't take that long because in September of 2018, Samantha and her dad would sleep together for the first time and then a month later, they'd get married. The mom had no idea what was going on, but she soon gets a clue and contacts the police where Sam is brought in and confesses that her and her dad have been getting it on. And she says that both her and her dad didn't believe that they were actually related. Police are quick to say, why would you do this since there's a possibility that you all are related? And she says the jealousy of fighting for attention just got to her and she just wanted to win this competition. A DNA test would take place and he was the father and they'd both be arrested in 2019. Travis would get two years in prison and Sam would get nine months probation and 22 days in jail. Travis is now out of jail in order to have no contact with Samantha and he says that his life after jail is going great. Going great? Do you know what you just did? You damn sick of what the heck? This world, man. Edit. Call it like we see it, man. What are you doing? No, it's not. Stop. Come on, man. I got a family. What are you doing? What are you doing? Please stop. I have four kids. What are you doing? What you just saw were some of the final moments of Uber driver Christy Spacuza's life. This is an extremely sad and horrific story. Hmm. Christy Spacuza was a mother from Pennsylvania who worked for Uber. 
She had a loving family, and on the night of February 10th, 2022, she was expecting to just work her normal shift on Uber. But on that tragic night, Christy picked up this man, Calvin Crew. Now, Christy had a dash cam video camera which was facing her and her passengers. And for the first 20 minutes or so of this ride, Calvin just sat in the back seat not saying anything, and Christy even tried to ask him questions like, Did you have a good day? How's it going? But at one point, Calvin pulls out a pistol, places it against Christy's skull, and informs her that she needs to drive. Now, Christy would continue to drive, and she begged the man in the backseat for her life, talking about her amazing children and her family and how it doesn't have to go like this, but it seems like Calvin's mind was already decided. And just two days later, Christy's car and her dead body were found in a neighboring area. Mm. Calvin had forced Christy to drive out to an isolated wooded area and murdered her out in the woods. After the murder, Calvin had used Christy's cell phone to access some of her financial apps like Cash App and sent himself some money, but it wasn't even a very large sum of money that this man stole. Calvin's girlfriend, Tania Mullen, was actually the one who called the Uber for her boyfriend that night. And she had even texted him that evening and said, I'm not going to jail if we get caught. Which is true because she never ended up going to jail or prison for her involvement in this horrifically sad crime. What? This is just such a tragic story that obviously did not need to happen. And that footage is some of the most horrifying that I've ever seen. A 14-year-old boy. Man, see, people who drive and lift the Uber, bro, they really taking a risk out here nowadays. Because you know how it, the world is crazy. So if you drive and lift an Uber, man... You just always have to be prepared. I'm skeptical about getting in those rides myself. Boy named Sebastian Guerrero decided to go for a walk up in the mountains and he wanted to go explore the different caves. There was light coming out of one of the cave entrances and he's starting to hear sounds. He realizes it's definitely a person and they're definitely screaming. There also sounds to be a large contingent of other people and he peeks his head right around the edge of the opening and he looks inside and what he sees causes him to just freeze in terror. He would run nearly 10 miles to the nearest police station. The way he described it to police was he basically thought he saw vampires. One of the police officers, his name was Luis Martinez, he would say, you know, okay kid, bring me to this cave and, and I'll have a look around. Later on in the day, the other police officers, they realized that Luis and the boy had not returned yet. The police and the Mexican army, they head out to where this cave was. And when they saw what was inside the cave, it would shock the world. What was it? Damn it! They always do that, man. This is the scary story about the lunch lady. There was a lunch lady named Judy, and everybody in school loved her. But they loved her food even more. Every single day, they would rush to the lunchroom just to eat her delicious food. But one day, a boy in seventh grade noticed something strange. In the back of the kitchen, he saw a mysterious door he'd never seen before. Mm. And he's been buying lunch for a year straight. He then went to the principal's office and told him what he saw. The principal then made his way down to the lunchroom and asked Judy about the door. She played dumb for a little bit, but eventually showed him. And what he saw inside made him freeze in horror. Inside were multiple children's dead bodies, completely cut up and strung up on the wall. Judy then looked at the principal with a smile on her face and said, How do you think my food tastes so good? This is the reason why. Judy was arrested and fired and is now serving 105 years in prison. But the crazy part is, how did this school allow a lunch lady to kill students and then sell their meat as lunch food? Hmm. They had no idea what was going on? We're gonna have to do a deep dive into that story. That's a chilling story, man. People who live stream their passing is par one. Here we have 19 year old Ocean who was from France and she worked at a retirement home. On May 10th, 2016, she would go live on what would be her last periscope of her life. She'd start this live in her apartment talking about how depressed she was and how she couldn't really find the energy to get out of bed. She'd also go on to talk about her ex and how bad of a person he was and mm. how that he had abused her. Even with all this, she'd be picked on and made fun of in the comments throughout the whole live. During this live, she would warn her younger viewers and tell them to sign off as she has something very big planned as her way to send a message. But like I said, nobody was really taking her too seriously. Eventually, she'd end up leaving her apartment and heading over to Eggly train station where she would sadly throw herself right into a train 
and this train would hit her, and unfortunately she would not survive. This would all be captured on live, and the next thing you'd see would be one of the first responders attempting to end the live stream, and he would actually do that at around 4.30. Interview with people Crazy. Magazine, Gypsy Rose and her husband, Ryan Anderson, are sharing their love story. The couple got married in a prison ceremony in July 2022, but up until this point, we hadn't really known the details of how they met. But mm. shortly before she was released, both Gypsy and Ryan spoke with People Magazine and shared some more details of their love story. Ryan Anderson is a 37-year-old special education teacher originally from Gypsy's home state of Louisiana. He told people that they first met back in 2020 when he decided to take a chance and write to her. He oh. said it was when Tiger King was really popular. My coworker at the time said, I want to write to Tiger King. And I said, I'll tell you what, if you write to him, I'll write to Gypsy Rose Blanchard. In that first letter, Ryan told Gypsy, quote, what her story meant to me. And on the second page, I just let her have it. I told her everything about me. He didn't expect to hear back, but by May 2020, the two were corresponding regularly. Mm. Ryan said that he would get butterflies when he got an email from Gypsy. And when the two spoke on the phone for the first time and he heard her voice, that all but sealed the deal for him. Gypsy was also falling in love as Ryan, quote, became her emotional backbone. She said that they met when the pandemic was really strong and she had a lot of emotional ups and downs because of it. She said, Ryan has seen me through some really good times, some really hard times. I would say that he is probably the most compassionate soul that I've ever met and the most patient. She said, I could be a lot to handle. I could be an emotional handful, but he is so patient with her. Because of restrictions thanks to the pandemic, they didn't meet in person until July 2021. But they continued to get closer, and according to the interview with People, Ryan became so in tune with Gypsy's emotions that he could tell how she was feeling as soon as she picked up the phone. Gypsy said, we've been able to build this emotional bond that within two seconds of talking on the phone, he knows my emotions. She said, I'm thankful that I have a man that is open enough with his own emotions so I could let my emotions flow. On July 21st, 2022, Gypsy and Ryan got married in a prison ceremony. And today, December 28th, 2023, he was the one to pick her up when she was released. Gypsy also mentioned in the interview with People that she wants kids one day. She said, it's hard because I'm going into a new life and I'm newly married and I'm going to have hmm. kids one day and I'm going to have to explain to my kids why their grandmother on mommy's side isn't around. And that's going to be a really hard conversation. But by all accounts, it seems like Gypsy is really happy with Ryan and that he has been there supporting her through a lot. So hopefully he will be continuing to support her as she adjusts to her new life. This is We all know how that ended. <laughs> Didn't she like break up within the cat kind of divorce and she went back to his ex? So it ain't been too well for my or for her ex, her other ex. Damn. There is a story about the peephole. A 15 year old girl named Donna lived with her father in a very small house. Ever since her mother died, Donna had depended on her dad for everything. One morning, Donna's father was leaving for a business trip. He then told her that he won't be back until later that night. And with that, he kissed Donna on the forehead and left. Mm. Later that day, when Donna came home from school, she did some homework and watched TV. The clock then struck midnight, and she noticed her father still wasn't back, so she decided to go to bed. That night, Donna had a dream. She found herself standing on the edge of a busy highway. She then looked across the highway and saw a familiar figure standing there. It was her father, and his hands were cupped around his mouth trying to yell something. But Donna couldn't make out what he was saying. She noticed her father's eyes were very sad, and he seemed to be desperately trying to communicate with her. She could barely make out the words he was saying, but it sounded like don't open the door. Suddenly, Donna woke up to a tapping noise. Then, somebody rang the doorbell. Donna then scrambled out of bed, got dressed, and ran down to the front door. Looking through the peephole, she saw her father's face outside. Mm. He was staring right at her, and the doorbell was still ringing. Okay, hold on, I'm coming, she shouted. She pulled back the deadbolt and was about to unlatch the door when she stopped. She then looked through the peephole again, and she noticed there was something off about her father's expression. His eyes were wide open, and he looked terrified. She then slid the deadbolt back into place. Dad, did you forget your keys? Donna yelled. The doorbell just kept ringing. Dad, answer me. Still, the doorbell continued to ring. Mm. Dad, please, I need you to answer me. Is there someone else out there with you? Still, the doorknob continued to ring. She then yelled at the top of her lungs, I'm not opening the door until you answer me. The doorbell kept ringing and ringing, but for some reason, her father refused to answer her desperate cries. For the rest of the night, Donna sat in the corner next to the door, 
crying and helplessly listening to the doorbell ringing over and over again. She then eventually fell asleep. In the morning when she woke up, she noticed it was very quiet. She then got up and went over to the peephole and looked inside. Her father was still there, just staring at her. Mm -hmm. She then cautiously opened the door and was confronted with a sight that filled her with unimaginable horror. Her father's severed head was hanging from a nail above the door, and there was a note attached to the doorbell. In weird sloppy handwriting, it read, Clever Girl. So she ain't, so ain't, she ain't fall for the trick. She had a dream, I guess, before that, before it happened, telling her not to open the door, and she, she followed her gut. said clever girl then so she was the target all along <sighs> crazy i wonder if there's more to that story we're going to try to search for find those clips <coughs> seekers if you guys made it with me to the end of the video you're a true seeker man seeking the truth i really appreciate the support like i said guys hit that like button subscribe follow me on my social medias down below man like i said <sighs> we're grinding man i don't need these daily uploads like i said maybe next month we're probably gonna switch it up but Thank you guys for um, sticking with me and joining me on my journey. I have really, truly believe we can grow the secrets into something special. I just need you guys' help by supporting these videos. You guys are going to catch in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, YouTube.